All right. Let me see what's going on, but we are here. Glad to have everybody all up in here. Let me make sure that I'm on. Y'all bear with me. Just got started. Just kind of waking up a little bit. I wasn't asleep, but I'm just waking up. A little tired today. We were out last night, but I'm here. All right. So what's up? All right. What's going on? I'm a few minutes late. I'm a few minutes late, but I'm here. Just in time. Glad to have everybody tuning in. My, my, my hair looking a little rough. Look like my little my lineup needs to be crisp. I should have got my lineup crisp, but I'm all right. Man, how y'all doing? Glad to have everybody checking in. Uh, let me shout out some folks in the chat room. The Hate King, Eric Scott, Bronze Queen, Chris X, Kenny Jackson, Adina April. Y'all come on in and chop it up with me. Let me know. Let me let my um, Instagram people know that we're live too. Let me let me go live on the gram real quick. Let me go live on the gram to let everybody know we're we're doing our thing. All right, Melvin Diggs, what's up, Melvin Diggs? What's up, Miss Charm? How are you, Charm? What's up, Graham? Yeah, a lot of stuff we're going to touch on. What's up, Miss Braxton? Yeah, yes, I was almost on time tonight. What's up, Instagram? Um, I'm live right now on um, YouTube. So all my Instagram people, I want you guys to go over to YouTube, type in Tariq Radio, and you'll see the live button there. You'll see the live button. Go to YouTube, type in Tariq Radio. That's my channel. Go to my channel, and you'll see us live. What's up, more melanin, please? How are you? What's up, Mr. Parker? All right, so y'all, what's up, LP? What's up in Brooklyn? Shout out to Brooklyn. All right, but all my Instagram people, go over to um, YouTube right now. I'm live. Join me. All right, let's get down to chopping it up. All right. Now, a lot of stuff going on, family. There's a video I want to show you guys. Let me down. Nah, I can't download it. Let me see if I can download it. Usually, I, usually I should have all this stuff ready. What's up in Alabama? Shout out to Alabama. Shout out to Alabama. Let me see if I can download this real quick. A couple of things I want to knock out. Don't act slow now. Hold on. Hold on one second. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I want to show something about this bait truck in Chicago. There was a bait truck in Chicago. I want to touch on that. I wish I could show you. Oh, man. To download this. It's going to take too long. Oh, man. I wanted to show you guys this. So that I got the whole flu. Hilarious. But you, look, shout out to Chicago. And I wanted to show you guys this, but it's hard to. to it's an hour long video and I got to. It's, uh, it's too much to do. But um, in Chicago, these filthy gray soldiers were going up in different black neighborhoods with a bait truck. Basically, they would get a truck, and the back of the truck was full of Nikes. And they would park it somewhere, act like they would arrest the driver, and then leave the truck there with the back unlocked with the boxes of Nikes showing, partially showing. And whenever the people went in and got the Nikes, they arrested them. That, that was their plan. That was their plan. But some, some brothers kind of caught on to what they were doing. So they were following the police around 
So wherever they parked the bait truck, they would film it, and then they would inform everybody in the neighborhood, y'all watch out. And it's just like that show, Bait Car. They had a TV show called Bait Car, where they would go into black neighborhoods and do the same thing. And they would specifically go into black neighborhoods to do this. You understand that this is just how insidious these white supremacists are. Brother Ben X, yeah. This is how insens in in insidious and dirty these white supremacists are. They'll create a system of economic and tangible deprivation. They create a system of deprivation where a part of the population, they are deprived of resources and tangible things based on race. They create a, a system to deny them of these resources and then dangle these resources in front of their faces and then say, okay, we're going to put a bait truck over here for the things that we're denying you systematically. And if you go get these things that we tell you this is what you should value, we deny you these things. We tell you in our media that you should value these. These are the things you should value. And if you go try to take it out of this truck that we just parked here, we're going to arrest you. You dig? So this is how dirty and insidious these white supremacists are. And I, sh I take my hat off to the brothers in Chicago who were checking them on that and telling them, hey, y'all need to get up out the neighborhood. That's... I wanted to show you guys the videos of the brothers telling the police, get out of here with that bullshit. Get this truck out of our neighborhood. We don't need you doing this to us. Y'all won't bring in jobs out here. You won't bring in anything. You won't bring in resources, but you're going to bring this up in our neighborhood? Shout out to the brothers, and I wish I could show them, but shout out to them brothers. And let me say this. There's a lot of folks who were shot in Chicago. I'm going to say this. I think a lot of these white supremacists are behind a lot of these shootings. Some might be gang related, sure, but all of these shootings, I think that there are white supremacists doing these shootings. The white supremacists are working with law enforcement. White supremacists are working with law enforcement heavy. As we saw in Portland, Oregon, when the Proud Boys and other white supremacist groups went up there to have their little march, the police were fully protecting them. The police up there in Portland acted as their bodyguards. The police were throwing tear gas and flash bombs at everybody except the white supremacists. They were going out of their way to protect those white supremacists. So understand, these white supremacist neo-Nazi groups, all of them, they've been deputized by law enforcement. They're completely working with them. All right? But this is why black folks doing all these marches of, please stop hurting us. And that shit is pointless. That is pointless. These white supremacists are in cahoots with law enforcement. Law enforcement are helping these people. They're being helped by these folks. Y'all remember a brother got killed out here in Long Beach a few weeks ago by a white supremacist. I don't think they have a suspect yet. I haven't heard anything about a suspect in this shooting and murder of this black man, this older black man is like damn near 60 I have not heard anything about a suspect now understand this when somebody's killed usually they can find evidence in 48 hours when somebody is killed they can find the evidence in 48 hours got it it's been weeks and you haven't heard anything about a suspect who killed his brother in Los Angeles, where in Long Beach, in broad daylight, at a public park. A black man, listen, listen. You find people who kill somebody in a dark alley in the middle of the night in a corner 
you can find clues, you can use surveillance videos and everything. A brother got killed in broad daylight at a public park, and now they don't know who did it. They know who did it because whatever the white supremacist group who did it, they're in cahoots with law enforcement. They got cameras everywhere, dude. Let me tell you something. When a gun goes off, they got monitors around the city that can pinpoint where the gun was shot. There's cameras at parks, cameras on every corner. They could just watch and see who's going in and out of the park. I mean, come on. A park full of people in broad daylight, and they don't know who did it. This is showing that these white supremacists are 100%, 100% protected. They're protected right now. You dig? Over in Chicago, they said two hospitals couldn't take any more gunshot victims. Yeah, I saw a video where there were people in Chicago, just a bunch of people hanging outside of hospitals. I'm saying there's some white supremacist groups behind this. There are some white supremacist groups behind this. Just going in randomly shooting in crowds of people. I, I suspect that they're behind this. You dig? But we also got to understand all the other little tricks that they're trying to play. I know activist Sean King, he was saying something online that um, some people, some trolls called child services on him, his family, talking about his kids were on drugs. And child services are actually investigating him and his family now. And I know his family, you know, they, they're, they're going through it. But understand this. These white supremacists, when they swatted, and I don't like to use that term swatted because that makes it seem like a prank, and it wasn't a prank. It was an assassination attempt on my life and my family. When they did that, when they were doing the assassination attempts on my life, they were, the white supremacists were doing stuff with my cable. That's why when I was doing the broadcast, the cable kept going in and out. Also, they threatened to call child services and lie and say that my children were being abused. They did the same thing. They did the same thing to me. They said they were going to call child services and make up a bunch of stuff. They told me they were going to do this because they were calling me, making these um, threatening calls all through the night. And... We informed child services, and we had law enforcement, you know, let them know what the deal was. You understand? So they were going to do the same thing to me, the white supremacists. They were going to try to call child services and do the same thing. Hold on, my, my camera guy. Is that okay? Hold on one second. This is my camera guy for HC5. Hold on. I saw about that, the scheduling shoots. But um, who was that talking about? Y'all in here starting rumors. Okay, hold on, wait. Niggas in here starting rumors. Hold on, let me. This guy, hold on. Hold on, let me ban this dude. This dude. Hold on, this Carson guy, he's just making up shit, so let me, um, he's gonna have to get banned. Hold on, where is he? Because I'm about to ban him. Hold on. Okay, I can't see him, but yo, that Carson guy, whatever, y'all ban him. Ban him. All right. Yeah, ban him. You gotta watch fake information. You gotta, thanks, Ola. Ola got him. You got to watch fake information and you got to watch slow information. And I say this, whenever people, if you hit me up on Twitter or Facebook and you have slow information, 
or old information, I'm, I'm going to ban you. I ban a couple of people today. If you send me a story like, oh, damn, Tariqa, you heard about this? And it's some shit from 2016, I'm banning you. I'm going to block you from following me. So if some of you guys hit me up and you found yourself banned, you're like, damn, what I do? I ain't just getting used to them major. Look, right now it's very, very important for black people to be ahead of the curve. We got to be predictive with our information. Forget about on time. We got to be in a situation where we can kind of predict what our enemy is going to do. We got to have predictive information, meaning, hey, this is going to happen in a couple of days. We got to be on that right now. We can't have people years behind the curve right now. I can't have people hit me up, man, have you heard about Trayvon Martin? I don't need, you're going to have to go. We don't have time. We, we just don't have time. You dig? I know. The, damn, man, you heard Obama running? I mean, it's old ass information, dude. We don't have time for that. You're wasting everybody's time. People got to take the time out to keep you up uh, and make you abreast of what's going on. So there's, there's an old news van that I have going on. Understand, in the internet world, news from two days ago is old news. You dig? So I, we can't have that old information. People just late. Slow on the draw. It's too late for that. I, I don't have time to hold people's hands. I don't have time to hold people's hands. Um, now, shout out to the Melanoid 300. Now, I'm using my other Facebook account to chop it up on the Melanoid 300 page. I can't add any more people because on my main Facebook page, the page that's used to add people, to the Melanoid 300 page. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to have to get a moderator or, or another admin on there who can add folks for me, somebody I can really trust. I like to handpick people. But Facebook, you know, Facebook banned me for 30 days because I put up a story criticizing a pedophile. I put up a story criticizing a pedophile. If you look at my Instagram page, I put up a story, and I played the clip on my um, Wednesday show. I put up a clip of this television program. They were doing this fluff piece about a pedophile. And he was talking about, well, yeah, I'm a, ped I'm a non-offending pedophile. I, you know, I, I haven't done anything, but I just have desire for kids. And I'm like, well, damn, they're really normalizing these people. That's all I said. I'm like, damn, they're normalizing pedophiles. That's all That's all I said. I didn't say anything disparaging. All I said was they're, they're really normalizing pedophiles now. And they banned me for a month. So pedophiles are not, they're, they're a protective class. They're protected class now. Facebook is already known for protecting white supremacists. Whites, they've even said it. They've come on out and said, we're protect there's a difference between a white supremacist and a white nationalist, that bullshit. They've come out and justified protecting these white supremacists already. Understand. And I didn't even say white pedophile. I didn't, I didn't say anything. I did not even specify a race. I said, hey, they're really normalizing these pedophiles. And they were like, well, this violates the terms of service. How? Okay. But we have to expect that. Facebook, we got to just get off Facebook. And again, I, I, I like Facebook for the, the private rooms. That's why I got the whole 300 room. That's what I have that for. That's what I have that for. That's the only benefit I see in that, where you can have a private room and just kind of kind of chop it up. But now, pedophiles... With Facebook, they are a protected class on Facebook. They're protecting pedophiles now. Because they'll ban you. If you really go in on white supremacists, they'll ban you on Facebook. You'll get a 30-day ban. Some of y'all know, if you talk bad about a white supremacist, that's violating the terms of service.
but they'll sit up there and plot and plan all types of marches and, and murderous events. They do that left and right. Understand, up there in Portland, that white supremacist march, that was partially organized on Facebook. The Charlottesville was organized on Facebook. Facebook has become a white supremacist rest haven. You dig? And you, you banned too? Black, black people get banned for every little reason. Shout out to Randy Moss. I saw Randy Moss had a tie, you know, with the name of um, Tamir Rice, Trayvon Martin, Mike Brown. So he was giving it up. And shout out to him. Shout out to him for using his platform to say, hey, you know, I, I just wanted to pay homage to some of the, the fallen brothers out here. Much respect to Randy Moss. I didn't see the speech, but I heard Ray Lewis... Boy, he was in full tap dance mode. I heard Ray Lewis. Boy, I, I wish I could see it. I heard Ray Lewis talk for like 30 minutes, boy. I saw a little clip. Ray was dancing. I mean, Ray, oh, Lord, it was, boy, they had honey on the biscuits up there, boy. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, well, when, when I saw Ray Lewis up there when Randy Moss was talking about the brothers being slain and, you know, giving it up for the brothers, the fallen brothers who are victims of white supremacy. Well, Ray Lewis, boy, them eyes, <laughs> oh, Lord, them eyes wanted to buck so bad. Ray Lewis stepped back a little bit like, eyes don't know him. Oh, Lord, Ray Lewis looked uncomfy. His eyes was bucking in his mind. <laughs> Ray Lewis, he got out of frame when he started talking about, when, when Randy Moss started talking about them brothers being slain. But Ray Lewis took him a biscuit break. Ray Lewis in the corner. <laughs> Ray Lewis took a biscuit break. <laughs> I mean, Lewis was not trying to have none of that talk. Man, shout out to Detroit, man. Much love to Detroit. Lord. But um, you know what's funny? Somebody said we should do another Coon Train video. You know what? We haven't had another Coon Train award because we were supposed to have a Coon Train, another one, last year. Because the, the first one we did was two, 2016, I think. First one was 2016. We're supposed to do another one last year. The problem was there were so many coons coming out, I kept having to come up with different categories. And I said, well, look, when, when I'm done with coming up with the categories, you know, and we'll get all the nominees together, then we'll do the show. The problem was there was an influx of cooning. I mean, there was a, an info. We kept having to come up with too many goddamn categories. Damn, I mean, you know we had the Diamond and Silks and the Sheriff Clarks, and then we had to have the Victims of Shooting Coons, like Stevante Clark's brother. That's a whole new category of coons. Then you have the, the Feminist Coons, the Bedwinch Coons. Oh, my God. The, the Preacher Coons. Um, best coon in an ensemble. I mean, this, the coonery just never stopped. The coonery just, it was a coon flux. Then Kanye, then we had to get some new hip-hop coons. My God. I mean, with the Ray Lewis, dumb shit. Damn near half the NFL. I mean, we, we it was so many people, we, we couldn't narrow down the coons. I mean, damn. We, we couldn't even narrow them down no more. <laughs> coons in movies. Oh, my God. The best coon character. Oh, my goodness. Cosplay coons. Gay Lives Matter coons. LGBT coons. Best coon publication like The Root. I mean, we just, the, the categories just, we're being flooded with coonery. 
So we, that's why we haven't done it. I mean, we're dead. How are we going to organize all that coonery in one show? We're going to have to have a coonapalooza. That's what we need to have. We need to have just a weekend of just paying homage to the coons. It has to be a coonapalooza week. Like a coon teller. Like... <laughs> Not like Coach Coontella, Coonchella. <laughs> you dig? You know, like Coachella, but Coonchella. It, it, it'll be a coon marathon. I mean, how are we going to narrow down all these coons? It's just, it's, it's incredible. <laughs> I'm like, literally, we're writing out the categories and we're running out of space. I'm like, damn, okay, now how are we going to organize all this? The... the Jason Whitlock, I mean, damn. Huh? <laughs> My God. <laughs> so it, it just became so much. So that's the thing. We got to organize all this cooning, man. It's just so much. We, we don't know what to do. Man, man, man. Because that's the thing. Like, we'll come up with it. Because each category has three people. So we'll have the, the biggest coon in sports. And we think we have a couple of, like, Charles Barkley, uh, Stephen A. Smith. And then you, Richard Sherman was on the coon train for a minute. Re Jerry Rice, remember him? Jerry Rice had the, the helmet with the chicken on it. All right, now that's another I mean, do we, need, we can't leave these coons out. Every time one coon pops up, somebody out coons them. So we keep having to, okay, let, let's do another category. My God. Oh, LaDainian Thompson. Oh, my God. That's an, oh, LaDainian. LaDainian Tomlinson. Well, when that nigga gave a speech paying homage to his slave-owning family, Ladanian Tomlinson, he gave a speech to the white people who owned his family. He paid homage to them. I thank them for two families coming together under one name, Tomlinson. Did this nigga just give props to the slave masters who owned his family? I mean, you, you, we can't contain that kind of coolery. And look, I mean, look, just this week. Uh, Trump just had a meeting with all these coon preachers. I mean, every week there's some new cooning going on that we can't even, now we got to create a whole new category. Trump just had a whole coon conference. So it's all over the place, man. Yeah, Richard Sherman jumped on that coon train for a quick second. You dig? So the thing is, it's crazy, man. You, you, we never know when the, the new coon is going to pop up. But let me say this. L let me play. Let me find this clip. Hold on. There's another clip I want to find. Hold on. I want to play this clip. Hold on. Let me show you all this clip. Because today we're talking about Clout chasing. Uh, I think this is the video I'm looking for. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Hold on. I want to play it. Hold on. Amigos, get about this motherfucker. All right, hold on. Let me let me play this. Let me let me download it real quick, and I'm gonna show this to you. Because this goes into what we're talking about today. The theme of today, we're talking about the clout chasing culture. We have a culture today where everybody wants to floss for the gram. We have a culture today. Whereas everybody wants to kind of piggyback and get clout and get views and get clicks on other shit. You understand? We got a culture now where people don't want to display any kind of talent. They want to latch on to somebody else doing something and kind of build some momentum off that. We got a real big problem. We got a lot of dudes doing that. That's a real problem when you got dudes doing that. That's why if you look at 
YouTube and all these things, you don't have a bunch of little funky little Negroes, especially making videos about me, especially these little anonymous fuckboys. They'll sit up and make videos trying to get views and clicks off another man's name. And you got dudes doing this. See, with the women, that's one thing. Women, that's kind of their thing. Women will latch on to a guy because women are a reflection of dudes anyway. So women, that's kind of expected to kind of latch on to a cat. That We can kind of give that a pass. That's what a lot of women do. There's nothing really wrong with that in certain degree. Now, sometimes you got like, you know, you know, little dean badass chicks who get on YouTube, you know, trying to get clout, clout out of other people's names because they don't really have any talent. So you got, um, you know, cheddar man looking chicks who will get on the internet and, you know, they're using somebody else's name so they can get views because other than that, I mean, who's really going to watch them? All right. But I'm, I'm talking about the average attractive woman. The actual, the average attractive woman doesn't have to do no shit like that. The average attractive woman. Well, they don't have to do it in a negative way. A lot of women will just kind of go out with dudes and sometimes they'll be on some love and hip hop shit where they'll talk about what happened and call Mo and Scott Young and get a show, whatever. But you got dudes. What I don't respect is dudes doing that. You got dusty, bitch made niggas making video after video. Um, I like to talk about the reason I did. I do not like the last video he had made. Uh, I feel like he is pimping the community. Well, it's always some old mushmouth nigga. It's always some old goofy mushmouth nigga trying to clout chase off another man. You understand? Because that's because you got a lot of men out here raised in single mother homes. These niggas are raised in single mom homes, so they saw their mother clout chasing the government. The, the mama had to latch on to another man, usually zaddy, or latch on to other niggas to try to get something. So these niggas think, okay, mama did that. That's how I get something. I find a man and kind of whine to this man about me getting something. I mean, look, listen to some of these niggas. You look, look at a clout chasing nigga on the internet. Ain't it always some old mush mouth nigga? This one nigga, and I don't, I don't never say this bitch nigga's name, but this nigga, one of these anonymous fuck boys, nigga got about 200 videos of me. And all, it's all mush mouth. I haven't heard... A, a complete video ever. I just heard a little bit of this niggas talking, and it's always some old dramatic, mush mouth shit. Um, you niggas, Harit Nahi is making all this money. I have said to you time and time again, he is not good for black people. Every fucking day, this nigga got a video, and, and he's always trying to be dramatic and Shakespearean. As the sand from the hourglass pours down, you will see I am correct in my assumptions that Tariq Nafi is not good for the community. As the yonder waits, the moon will reveal the light that Tariq Nafi is not who he say he is. He is a charlatan. In every sense of the word, everything about him is debauchery. <laughs> Just everything is so dramatic and mush mouth with these niggas. <laughs> I mean, these mush mouth niggas just sit up with all this stupid ass shit, cloud chasing. <laughs> As I look into my window, the leaves of autumn turn a hue that is rough colored. This is the season of the truth. The truth shall reveal that Tyreek Nasheed is who he say he is. He will rule the day that he has deceived and deceptivized the black community. It's always some old drawn out nigger babble. This mush mouth nigger babble. <laughs> and these niggas in there, they, they, and that's the only way they can get attention. 
the only way they can get attention is if they mention another man. So now they have it has to be all drawn out now. So now everything has to be about another man, and it has to be all drawn out in Shakespearean. You dig? <laughs> I listen to the babbling brook in the morning as the rusa causeth me to arise in the a.m. I look into the dusk. I log on to my computer, and I see that Tariq Nasheed is still dwelling among the common folk. I will rue the day when Tyreek Nasheed is exposed for his contemptuousness and derogatory leanings towards the black community. Like, if you don't get your mush mouth ass somewhere and go um, mentor some damn kids. <laughs> and it's always these old Maya Angelou ass niggas. A tree. A tree that falls in the forest, and no one said to hear it. Does it make a sound? Still I rise, still I rise. It's coon. <laughs> I don't know, these niggas use these little big out of context words. <laughs> I seen the truth with my own two eyes through my peripheral vision. I can see left and right, unlike what others can accumulate with their eyes. And I see the truth. And the truth is, Tariq is nothing but a debaucheratory charlatan. And he is going to use you people just like the birds used worms to feed and grow nectar in their bellies. Okay, nigga. <laughs> You know, you, we all know stupid niggas like that. You dig? But these niggas who latch on to other men, that shows the fuckboyism that's going on out here in the game right now. We have a whole society of fuck niggas. That's why I feel for the ladies. You know, I, I, ladies, I feel your pain with the pool of niggas out here like that. That's the shit you got to screen and go through. But... I'm going to play this clip real quickly. This was um, a clip of some Hispanic workers at this job. Two of the guys, two Hispanic workers got fired. So all the Hispanics at this job quit. They're at this warehouse. So all of them quit. So they pretty much shut down this place. And that shows how on cold they are. But the thing is, is a brother, he's filming them. Now, this brother, you know, he's trying to be animated. You know, he, then he's, you know, he, he's sounding a little coonish. And, you know, he's being extra and over the top and all this old bullshit. Just listen to this. Hey, Migos, get about this motherfucker. Y'all got him fucked up. Come on. <laughs> Look at him. They sent a couple of them home. They all packed they shit up and shut this motherfucker down. Nigga, who y'all think y'all playing with? Mexico, man, this is what black people need to be on, man. I swear to God, I love this shit. They are packing they shit up and shutting this motherfucker, huh? Uh, on my mama, all that shit. <laughs> they are not bullshitting. They packed up, yeah, I see, it's over. Them motherfuckers now packed up and dipped. They thought they was gonna play with these amigos and they said, oh yeah, we rise together, homie. And they leaving. And they not bullshitting. Take this in, man. Look at this, man. They shut this big motherfucker down today, man. We all going home, man. The SAs. Look, ain't no grinding, cutting, welding. This is motherfucker dead ass quiet. The Mexicans shut this motherfucker down, nigga. Said, fuck you, bitch. And really, and really, see, this is what I'm talking about, baby. I swear to God, they got me here geeked up on my Malcolm Beck shit. Oh, my mama, nigga. Fuck the bullshit, nigga. Look at this. They shut this bitch down. They pissed them off, nigga. And they said, fuck you, we out. We not working no more today. Kiss my ass, nigga. I'll let y'all tomorrow on my mama. That's great. Look, ain't nobody here. We're just cleaning up. We're going home. It's over. I'm right with the essays, nigga. Fuck it. Go to the crib. Go to the, go to the casa. 
I thought I was going to be in. Boy, be in. You swear to God. All right. All right. So that's that dude. And he's, he's all extra. You know, he. No, no, that's cool. And being all that old. Yeah, oh, my mama. I'm going to get out of here. Fuck all that. Oh, my mama, man. Now you, you, you shucking and jiving now. Now you shucking and jiving. Now you being animated. And that's the thing. We start getting real animated. We got, yeah, fuck all that. Fuck all that. You notice, look at those Hispanic dudes. Look at those Hispanic dudes. And I think that dude, the, the dude talking, I think he got fired too. Somebody said he got fired too. But... Look at the Hispanics. They weren't all that. Oh, yeah, oh, my mama. Oh, my mama. They weren't doing all that. They weren't doing all that. They got their shit up and they bounced. They got on code and they bounced. Now, you can film all that without all the animation and all that old bullshit. Because this is the thing. What dude should have been doing instead of the clout chase. And he's trying to clout chase off those Hispanics. They're doing something on code, and he's, oh, damn, they on code, man. We need to be doing that. Well, nigga, how come you ain't doing it, my dude? Fuck all that old animated guy. Oh, my mama, though. Oh, my mama, though. Damn. Fuck all that clowning shit, dude. Fuck that clowning, my nigga. What my man should have been doing, what he should have been doing, well, fuck all that buck dancing, that nigga should have been on the phone like, hey, to brothers, hey, man. There's a gang of job openings right now. Let's all go get it right now. That's what my man should have been doing. Dude should have been on the phone to everybody in the hood. Like, okay, there's some job openings right now. Come on through. Let's get it. That's how you get on code. Don't talk about a code. Get on the code. Get on the code. Get on code and holler at the people in the neighborhood. And be like, hey, man, let's get it. This warehouse need workers now. Let's get it right now. That's the code right there. Oh, my mama. Oh, damn. What? God damn. See, that's that. Niggas get that from that single mother shit, too. That single mother shit, too. That old animated shit out in public. Last night, we were at the Charlie Wilson concert last night. Charlie Wilson and the OJs. And I see this every time I go to a concert, especially with this black folks. There's always that extra... Mammy in the audience, all loud and out of context, making the shit about her. So it was somebody sitting kind of behind us. Oh, I got that damn, Charlie! Woo, shit, saying that shit, Charlie! I mean, just really, uh, this is this is during a slow song. So everybody, the audience is calm, but now this is her opportunity to make it about her. Oh, shit, I keep on yearning, Charlie! Shit! And it's... Now it's like, let me get some attention for myself. You dig? <laughs> it's always that I want to be seen. Let me be loud than a motherfucker. Let me be the loudest, most animated motherfucker in the room. They get that from their mama, the mammies. That's where they get that shit from. That attention-seeking shit. You, you look at one of them single mothers, them old mammies, and they be talking the same way as that nigga right there. We talking the same shit. Like, God damn, on my mama, though. Dude, forget all that. We ain't got time for that. While these Mexican cats are on code like they're supposed to be, you be on code. You be cool. You film that and be like, damn, there's a gang of job openings. Let me call the homies. But see, we, we love attention. We love clout chasing off other people. They're on code, and this nigga's over here trying to get clout off them being on code. He's the damn cheerleader. We always got to be somebody else's fucking cheerleader. We always got to be a, a cheerleader from for some other group. You understand? We got to get off that. Oh, I know. I, I can imagine in the South they be showing out. But we can't be the cheerleaders for other groups all the damn time while they're on code and we're in the corner. Rah, go, give me an S. Trying to get likes and trying to be all animated just so you can put it up on the gram and, and, and get likes. And I saw some other fuckboy type of shit. 
this one dude on Twitter, he post, he made a post. Hold on a second. Hold on. This one guy on Twitter made a post. And this goes back to the clout chasing shit again. What's a lot of y'all in here tonight? We're in here heavy. We're in here heavy. This dude made a post. And let me see if I can read the actual post. So I'll be writing exact. Let me find it. And let me see if I can actually read the post on Twitter for you guys. So I want to be writing exact with this. Hold on one second. Y'all bear with me one second. Y'all bear with me one second. There's another clip I want to play too. I want to play something else too. I want to play this bad one. Hold on one second. Let me find that clip. Hold on one second. Well, let me find the tweet so I can read it word for word. Um, Y'all bear with me. Bear with me. Bear with me. Oh, here it is. Okay. So this guy, his name is Austin Logan. That's his name. So. First of all, the nigga's moist as all fucking get out. He's on his, the nigga's on his Twitter. His Twitter play page is him with his shirt off, taking a selfie, and he's looking over his shoulder. He's taking a, the nigga taking a picture like like this. So okay, so that just sets that that's where we are right now. All right, all right. I'm not exaggerating. So this nigga's with his shirt off, taking a fucking selfie. All right, that's number one. All right. So on his um on his Twitter, he posts his, he posts this story. It's a horrible story. He posts the story. It says, "Please retweet. These are pictures of my nephew after my sister's fiance brutally beat him and burned his face. He has third degree burns all over his face." His mouth, belt wounds all over his body, and the courts aren't doing anything to save him. This man deserves life in jail. And there's a little baby boy, and the boy looks beat up. The baby boy does look beat up. It's horrible. It's horrible. It's horrible. This is horrible. So now a lot of people are trying to, they're asking information. They're trying to see what's going on with this. Who, whose little boy is this? This little boy is all beat up. Who did it? I'm trying to like... Who, who's the perpetrator? Who did this? And the dude ain't really giving out no new information. And, you know, some hours went by and he was like, everybody follow me for some, follow me. Just Everybody just follow me. Follow me on here. Follow me. Follow me. He's asking everybody to follow him. I'm like, well, nigga, my dude. Okay, hold on. Who's the dude? Y'all stop with the fake fucking tweets. But the dude was on some shit where he's trying to, he's using this to get people to follow him. He's using he's using this to get people to follow him. Hold on one second. The next time, let's do this. Family, the next time somebody comes in the room and says that somebody died, everybody make a donation. All right? That, that usually, these are white supremacists doing this. So if they come in, anybody else in the room says that Bill Cosby died or somebody else died, everybody make, make a little donation. And that usually deters them. So everybody make a donation to the Melanoid Ministries right here. There's a dollar sign right there. Y'all hit that dollar sign, make a little small donation the next time they come in here. Because the white supremacist trolls have been doing that all night, talking about different people have died and all that. So um, next time they do it, just make a little donation there. All right, but this guy, like like I said, the, the the moist dude talking about his nephew got beat up, and he's asking people to follow him. I'm like, dude, are you trying to, are you using this to clout? You clout chasing off this now? It, now number one, if this is fake, you you're a bitch nigga for using uh, uh, images of a beat up child 
in order for you to get followers. What kind of bullshit is that? What kind of bullshit is that if this is fake? If this is fake? You're trying to get likes and views off of a beat up child if this is fake. Let me, I'm going to address that NRA thing in one minute. Hold on. Now, the thing is this. If it is real, if your nephew did get beat up by your sister's boyfriend or some shit like that, that makes you doubly bitch made for hopping your ass on the internet about it. That makes you triple bitch made. What the fuck you jumping on the internet talking about your sister, your, some, your sister's boyfriend beat up your nephew? You're supposed to go handle that or some men in your family are supposed to go handle that. You're supposed to go handle that. What's up? Who's this? Shout out to Alonzo Earl. Shout out to my dude Alonzo Earl from the Money Team. Oh, what's this? Well, hold on. What's this? Hold on. Hold on. What is this? Hold on. Hold on. I'm looking at this video. Hold on. I'm looking at another video of an Asian man beating a sister. Okay, did this woman steal something? Okay, I'm looking at this video. Hold on. Okay, I don't know where this This looks like Africa somewhere. I'm looking, shout out to my man Alonzo Earl from the money team. Where is this? Hold on, where is this? I, I want y'all to see this. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me show y'all. Shoplifting? What is she doing? Okay. I don't know. I, I've seen I've seen about three videos in within the last couple of days of Asians just beating the shit out of black women. This looked like it might have even been in another country, but I've seen so many videos of Asian men and women whooping black women's asses. I've seen what well, I've seen one video of an Asian dude calling a black man a nigger at a CVS. They're like, nigger, nigger. And the black man was like, meet me outside, man. It's going to be on and popping. But I'm going to get on that in a minute. But like I was talking about this moist dude who was on the internet talking about his nephew got beat up. Instead of being on the internet, you should, somebody needs to be over there handling that. Somebody needs to be handling that. You don't be on the internet like a bitch. Whining to other people. You handle that. If that's your nephew and her boyfriend did it. You handle that. This nigga, I'm looking at his page and he's on there with flip-flops on. With his stomach out and all. Come on, man. I don't know what, I don't know what his lifestyle is. But whatever your lifestyle is, you need to be about that life. You can't take on woman attributes and when you need to be handling man business and man business is stepping to people who harm your family that's man business you sitting on the internet in some flip flops talking about ooh I need some I need some justice fuck out of here dude if your sister's boyfriend beat up a baby the fuck you on the internet for my dude come on you go handle that, and if you moist, go get you six, seven other moist niggas and jump them. Beat them with your deal, though. So something, mm, nigga, mm, do something. We got too many estrogen-raised niggas out here. Damn, this nigga's eating all these soy products. That's the problem. That's why these white supremacists are stepping to us now. We got effeminized niggas who ain't going to do nothing except to another black person. But they ain't going to do nothing to these white supremacists and, and all these other people. But like I said, I've seen a lot of videos of Asian women and Asian men 
step in the system's heavy. And the thing is, the problem is, y'all getting beat up in these nail shops and you'll be y'all still be going there first thing in the morning. Y'all going to these nail shops, they're beating you with broom handles, and you'll still wind up the next day. Black people collectively, the self-esteem, the collective self-esteem of black people is at an all-time low. You understand? And when your self-esteem is low, you're letting other folks know how to treat you because what you're saying is, I deserve your mistreatment. When you say, I don't deserve this, you won't let it happen to you. When you sit up here and let people beat you with broomsticks and then you go there the next day and still give these people your money and they still got a business the next day. Yeah, my girl Claudia, she had a run in at one of these beauty supply stores out here. I saw that. You did? Because see, what we do, we value nigger trinkets more than freedom. We value nigger trinkets more than freedom. Let's be real. And I'm going to play y'all a, a clip of this bed winch. Let me play y'all a clip of this bed winch. And this is how, unfortunately, there's a lot of black people feel like this bed winch. They're not going to admit it. But this is a known bed winch. Her name is Tree of Logic. And I'm going to play the audio of her. I want y'all to listen to this. Hold interest. On. That. Oh, listen. It's in my best interest that white people stay the majority and not become a minority. I would hate for America to be. Oh, good. I can't even say it. I, I, it, it, it. Now, let me say this. She's sitting here with a white woman. She's like on the, this. She's on Skype or something, and there's a white woman on the other half of the screen. So this this is white supremacist female and this black feminist named Tree of Logic, who's a known bedwin. She used to be a dominatrix. She she does gutter sex with white men, and she does all that coon talk. But this is her showing out in front of the white lady. Oh, good. I can't even say it. I I it, it, you can it, say it. it, 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 it I'm afraid because it's like I would get chills up my spine to think of black America. Are you shitting me? And somebody said, or or maybe Mexico or Hispanic America. And I know, I, I just, and somebody, I, I had a white person said, well, what? Oops, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, I'm sorry about that, guys. Hold on. Oh, let me play it again. I, I, I cut it by mistake. Hold on. I would get chills up my spine to think of black America. Are you shitting me? And somebody said, or or maybe Mexico or Hispanic America. And I know, I, I just, and somebody, I, I had a white person said, well, what, what, well, what do you mind, what would America look like if it was black? I said, combine South America with Chicago. There you go. Okay. We don't, you and I have that one thing in common. We don't want white people to be a minority here in America. Okay. And that's a dead serious bed winch right there. And do you know there's a lot of other Negroes who feel just like she feels? Let's be real. You think she's, a, do you know how dangerous that type of Negro is? She ain't, she's not playing. Like she's strong. I mean, th this is a person because she's like, she's real strong in the face. So she's probably, she was shunned by black men all her life. And probably just black society. So she probably grew up with a vendetta against black society. She couldn't wait to just shit on every black person. She's dead ass serious. She's not playing. That's the problem. She ain't playing. This is what we got among us around here. This is a dark skinned bed wench right here. She's not light skinned at all. This is a, a dark skinned Negro bed wench manny. You understand? Who's just unapologetic about her coonery and bedwinching? You dig? No, she ain't fat. She's like slim. She's a bit tall, real strong in the face. Slim, real, real strong in the face. She's like 6'3". She's a big old, tall, hideous chick. You know, so, so cats, brothers, they... You know, they weren't checking for her. She probably grew up ugly, and, you know, she she's harbored that hate for a long time. 
You understand? She's harbored that hate for a long time. She can't. She couldn't wait to get back at black society. She, and, and the white supremacists, they know how to pick Negroes like that. This is why they, they like the dark ones. They like the dark coons. The light ones, you know, they can use them to a certain degree if they're family. You know, if they're, if they're family members. But they know the light ones can, can kind of switch up at the drop of a hat. But when they get a dark one, notice all the hardcore coons and bedwinches. They're usually dark. Her name is Tree of Logic. That's her uh, um, online name. You can Google her, by the way. You dig? But they know how to go get the darkest one. Because a lot of times in, in black society, there are a lot of dark black people, unfortunately, were made fun of as, as youths. A lot of real dark black people, usually some of them come from immigrant families. A lot of them are like second or first generation immigrants. So unfortunately, because black kids and black people have been programmed negatively about white supremacy, a lot of dark skinned black people are, us are usually ridiculed and oftentimes sometimes by their own family. But a lot of times they're ridiculed as kids, so they take that, they harbor that. So the white supremacists, they're very aware, aware of this. They understand how to pit the colorism thing against other people. So they know that one of these bed wenches or one of these um, coons, like a Jesse or a Larry Elder, these are dark brothers. They know one of them are just ripe for the picking. You get around, you get one of them and say, hey, you're, you're not like those other ones. You know, those other blacks, you ain't like them. Hell yeah, ain't like them. They used to tease me. See how they are? They're just, they're more bigoted than us, aren't they? Hell yeah. Hey, come on, come on, have some of these butter biscuits. You like biscuits? Come on, have some biscuits. What kind of, you like white women? You like white women, don't you, Crispy? <laughs> they start negotiating with you. They know how to get a coon and, 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 and dangle a carrot in front of a coon. They bring certain white women to you. You, you like white girls, don't you? Come on, I got a couple of, I got a couple of girls from Idaho. You know, they've they been looking for a nice, strong buck like yourself. You know, they'll sacrifice a couple of um, floozies within white society. That's why you notice a lot of those athletes. They be having the same white women. They rotate them. The same white women be going from brother to brother to brother to brother to brother. They rotate the same batch of white women. You understand? Not just in the NFL, but just in Hollywood. The, the same batch of white women be with the same brothers. They all pass around. You dig? So they just slide them their way. Like, come on, come on, Negro. Yeah, yeah, I know how growing up they used to ridicule you. They used to call you a little darky. We, we won't do that. I mean, you're a good guy, man. You're a really good guy. I'm going to make you, I'm going to make you head of agriculture here, Ben Carson. I don't know nothing about no agriculture. It don't matter. You black, you're a coon. You're going to be the head of agriculture, nigga. <laughs> They'll make a position for a coon just to put you in position so that you can be a shield to hide their racism. You understand? That's why they put them in positions they don't know nothing about. <laughs> like, and then when they're done with you, they kick you to the curb. It's like with Amarosa. Amarosa, we're going to make you, let me see, and Amarosa's jet black. Amarosa, we're going to make you um, head of black outreach. Okay, Massa. Then when they realized that didn't work, all right, Amarosa, won't you leave your key up here by the door? All right, it's time for you to go. And now Amarosa wants to come out here copping, please. Well, I, I knew there were some problems. No. Don't you come over here with that bullshit, Amarosa. Well, yeah, I knew Trump was losing his, his wits. No, 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 no. They had to kick your black ass out the White House, Amarosa. Don't come around here with that bullshit, talking about you knew something was wrong. You didn't leave voluntarily. You understand? Amarosa did not leave voluntarily. They had to kick that woman out the White House, kicking and damn screaming. 
She left her curling iron and everything up in this. They left her kicking and screaming out the White House. You did? So now she wants to slide back over like, oh, oh yeah, I was just I was just in there trying to get intel for us. I was just in there trying to get some information. Stop. Stop. You dig? But they know how to do that. They know how to pick and they know how to find their coons. And like I said, a lot of times they're first and second generation immigrants. Usually they're very dark. So a lot of times, especially they're from Africa, or they're the sons of, or daughters of Africans, they had to hear African booty scratcher. And that reminds me, you know, DJ Vlad did an interview recently with Colin Noir. Colion Noir from the NRA, the token Negro from the NRA. He's that's his job. He's literally the token Negro of the NRA. You understand? So they did an interview with him on DJ Vlad. And Coleon basically said everything that I said about him. He admitted that his mother was an African immigrant, which I knew. I told you guys that years ago, that this nigga was, a, he was an African immigrant. That had a lot to do with his cooning. And he talked about growing up down in Texas. And um, the, the interview was very short, but he talked about how his mom kind of sheltered him to a certain degree. And he was kind of codifying his words, but he was saying, well, my mom, she wouldn't let me hang out with drug dealers. My mom wouldn't let me hang out with gang members. So basically what he's trying to, these are little code words he's trying to use. His mom told him to stay away from niggas. That's what he was really saying. Stay away from American blacks. See, a lot of people use code words they use code words like gangs and drug dealers to describe American black people. Yeah, he's a he's an attorney, but he's like an attorney like Ben Crump is an attorney. You know what I'm saying? He's an, an attorney like that. Just because you're an attorney don't mean shit, but whatever. But that's basically what he was saying. That mama his was saying, don't hang around the niggers. Don't hang around those American blacks. So understand he's growing up hearing don't hang around American blacks all your life and then the white supremacists they see you they know they know coon potential let me tell you let me break something down about white supremacy the white supremacists know how to groom niggas they know how to groom you the white supremacists know how to groom you from a very young age they know how to groom you, and they know how to undermine you at a very young age. For example, in school, if you have a black child who's around seven, eight years old, who's very confident, very self-assured, the white supremacists, they'll target that little kid and undermine him. They'll find little things about him to punish him. Like if he speaks up in class or if he questions some of the answers of or he asked questions about the curriculum. Like, Darnell, you're being disruptive. You're being disruptive, Darnell, and they'll, you're gonna get detention. They'll come up with ways to undermine you. Or if you're, the young boy has a lot of energy, instead of directing that energy in a positive place, like, okay, we'll get you in certain sports, we'll get you in this. You got, you're too energetic, we're gonna put you on Ritalin. You're doing too much, Darnell. You're going to have to take some of these pills or you're going to get suspended. They'll undermine the black child who has a lot of positive masculine potential. Now, same vein, the black child who's switching a little bit. He's a little dainty. He might be a little moist. He's a little sassy. A little moist, sassy boy. Come here, little Chris. Chris, I need you to help me grade the papers. Now, you they bring the little moist kid in. 
they kind of groom him and kind of shelter the little moist kid. You understand? The kid that's switching around a little bit, so he's non-threatening. So they'll get the little non-threatening boy and kind of coddle him and make him the teacher's pet. The moist kid is the teacher's pet. You understand me? I would see this when you go. Like, you remember growing up, I would grow up and the, the, the dude switching would always be real cool with the teacher. He would go get the teacher coffee, be switching around with coffee and cream. Always the little moist kids as the teacher's pet. He's like the little teacher's assistant. You understand? And also what they'll do if the kid once he get older, especially in high school, they'll start, if he has potential to make the school money, like the colleges or whatever, they'll they'll funnel him in, him in the football and all that. And they'll, again, they'll, they'll protect him as long as he's making money and income for the school. You understand? So if you have masculinity like that, you have to make money for the school. They have to utilize you in a certain way. But if you ain't on the football team and you're a masculine dude, oh man, you're gonna you getting written up, you're getting suspended, you're getting expelled, unless you're on the football team. Now, if you're on the football team, you can do anything. Because you're making money. They'll they'll coddle you. Again, the white supremacists, they know how to utilize their Negroes. But the moist kid, the one who's a little dainty, non-threatening man, he gets all types of write-ups, all types of escalate, uh, uh, accolades. I'm, I said escalate, ain't that a bitch? I said escalades, accolades. I said he gets all types of escalades. I sound like one of the mushmouth YouTube niggas. As I see Tariq trying to get escalades in the industry. You know, I sound like one of them niggas now. Trying to get accolades. <laughs> but what they'll do, yeah, they'll have them selling candy and shit. You ever notice that? It's a, you ever been at a store and it's always some little kid? Hi, my name is Jamarca, I'm selling candy for the school. All right, I, I bought two candy bars from you, player. It's always a little moist boy selling candy for the school. We got a school trip. We're trying to go through the Grand Canyon. I like to sell you two candy bars. And then what? <laughs> they got to selling them to white folks. <laughs> and what happened, the little list, the boy at the list, black folks don't want to buy no candy bars for him. And then that nigga get mad. And then he's, you're planting the seed for an older fuck nigga. Then he's sitting up in his bedroom with a, a gang of candy bars. And I stare into the moon. And I look into the sands of the hourglass. No one would buy candy from me. I detest the despicabilities of these niggas that did not buy candy from me as I try to emphasize my capitalistic yearnings. And that nigga grows up to be a YouTube coon. <laughs> but, uh, but like I said, the, the moist kid, the moist, the, the, the little dainty kid, they'll start giving him little write-ups and, and accolades and college recommendations you know, they'll, they'll walk him through. They'll give him props. Like, hey, little, little Jamarcus is good. He sold candy. He was in the glee club. He worked with the teachers. I mean, they'll give you a high recommendation. So you go to college, same moist, dainty dude, getting the same type of escalades in college. <laughs> He's getting the same escalades. Hey, little Jamarcus is great here in college. He's doing this. He's doing that. He, you, they, they'll coddle him. You dig? And then in college, when it comes to the job market, those college professors that he's been switching around and being dainty around, they'll call up the job. Hey, over um, uh, Time Warner's uh, cable, Time Warner, there's a great guy here, man, great college student, man, I highly recommend him, hard worker, man, real good guy. His name is Jamarcus, the best fella you ever want to work with. And then he goes work at Time Warner, switching around. And that's why when you go to a, a corporation, Especially out here in L.A., every time you go to a major corporation, there's always that one black dude switching around the office. You understand? Hey, we got a great job at CNN. Hey, guys, meet Don Lemon. You, you did? 
That's why at these corporations, there's always that that one dude, black dude, switching around. And I'm not saying this to disparage anybody. I'm not saying good, bad, right, or wrong. I'm not saying this to disparage anybody. I'm just saying when they they can they mold you from a young age. They see how you act as a kid, the little dainty kid. Oh, they're gonna they they're creating a space for you. They understand the the power of a non-threatening black man. You do? They understand that. But I, I've never been to a, a meeting in Hollywood at any production company where there was not a gay black man walking around. Never. Never, 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 never. I'm saying never. 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 I've been to meetings at every place in Hollywood. I've never not seen one gay black dude walking around the office. There's always one. And I ain't knocking him. He deserves to work. I'm not saying the brother didn't deserve to work. But whenever they have a black person, usually it's one, and usually they're gay. If it's two, one of them is gay. Or one of them is moist. You there? No, ben, no oh, let, let's look at TMZ. Van is cool. And I know Van, uh, Van ain't gay. But there's a, that light-skinned dude with the, the, the braids... Over at TMZ, I think he is. I, I don't know he is. I don't want to say put the man shit out there, but I know Harvey Levin is gay from TMZ. Harvey Levin is openly gay. So that black man who's always under him, that light-skinned dude with the braids, I think he might be, because he's always up under... Dude, what's up? What's up, Pete? What's up? Boy sleep? Okay. Well, they were real antsy. Yeah, that dude with those those dreads. The dude with the dreads, he's... Yeah, the dude with the dreads, he, he looks moist. Dreads, not braids, whatever. Shit. <laughs> I'll say he's married. I don't... That nigga Torre is married too. Torre is a little dainty. You did? I ain't. Said the dude has a white wife. Okay. Still dainty. <laughs> Man. I think I don't get shit just because, hey, the white women let them niggas get away with a lot of shit. But like I said, they, they groom dudes. They groom them. They know how to groom moist dudes and they know how to groom a coon. The white supremacists, they know their niggas better than anybody. They know you better than you know yourself. They know you better than you know yourself. They know how to groom you. And speaking of the NRA, y'all notice the NRA, they keep putting out this story talking about they about to go broke. The NRA, they keep telling this story that they're about to go broke. Let me tell y'all something. That's 100% bullshit. That's 100% bullshit. NRA is not about to go broke. They're not. The NRA is trying to finesse. They're not going broke at all. That's a, They're trying to just raise extra money. It's the midterms popping up. They're just trying to get more money so they can give to their candidates, so they can give to Trump and some of his interests and some of the other politicians. The NRA is not about to go broke. Let's stop it. The NRA is a white supremacist organization. Nothing more, nothing less. White supremacy don't go broke. They look out for each other. The NRA is a white supremacist organization. This is a campaign drive. This is them saying, hey, oh, Lord, we're going broke, guys. You need to hurry and give us some money and help. This is some midterm shit so they can get money to give to their constituents so they can get these people to get these gun laws passed. This is a hustle. They're finessing. They ain't going broke. The NRA, understand, family, the NRA is white supremacy embodied. White supremacy is about deception. Deception, deception, deception. 
the NRA, they'll always be overly funded. But white supremacy is about deception. They have to get as many fast donations as possible so they can get these gun laws going on. They, they're trying to get these printable 3D guns popping. The NRA is just oozing with money. It's a white supremacist organization, and they understand the dog whistles. They're fully aware of the dog whistles. You dig? NRA got good money. They get money from police unions. They get money from all of these white supremacists. It's a white supremacist hub. They're not going broke. They're just trying to get money to give to their um, constituents in the midterms so they can start getting these lobbies and the, the, these guns, um, gun laws pushed through. That's all it is. Yes, yeah, the old Sally Struthers trick. None but game. Well, we're in here heavy. We're in here 4,000 deep. Uh, uh, I wish I had. Let me, let me tell Mama Peanut. Hold on, let me see something. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, guys. Okay, sorry about that, guys. But, um, yeah, we're in here deep. 4,000, we're over 4,000 people in here. We are in here heavy. We are in here heavy, heavy, heavy. We're in here heavy. But let me, the gun is the equalizer. These, the white supremacists are not about to give their guns up or their gun organizations up for nothing. They're, they're supporting the NRA more than ever. They're supporting the NRA more than ever. And I understand dog whistles, because Trump is very good. Well, Trump, I would say he's good at dog whistles, but he actually he's not, because his racism is so blatant with that thing with LeBron. When um, the other day when LeBron, you know, put the school up and LeBron did an interview with Don Lemon, Trump was like, yeah, um, he made, he implied that, well, he said that Don Lemon was dumb and LeBron is dumb and Don Lemon is so dumb, he makes LeBron look smart. And he said, I like Mike, meaning I like Michael Jordan. Now that's very interesting that he would say that. That he said that he liked Michael Jordan. And Michael Jordan put out a statement. Uh, basically, it was a non-statement. Michael Jordan put out a statement, well, I like what LJ, LeBron James, is doing for his community. And a lot of folks were looking at, at Michael Jordan like, okay, what the hell? Lupe, Lupe the killer, Coleon is not cool. Coleon is not cool. Let's let's get off that. Let, let, hold on, let me address this shit. Because Lupe is up here talking about Coleon is cool. Nigga, no form of cooning like that is cool. That's our problem. We keep making excuses for utter bullshit coons. And this is why we stay in the situation we're in. That Coleon ain't cool. This dude is all up in the NRA's ass. And the NRA is a white supremacist organization. And they use him to try to cloak their racism. So he ain't cool. Let's get off that. Well, he's still our brother. No. No. We're going to get off that bullshit. That every coon is. Yeah, this whole thing where we got to coddle coons, no. But but back to Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan ain't going to, he's going to be neutral. Michael Jordan ain't about to ruffle nobody's feathers. He ain't about to ruffle masses feathers. And that's the thing. Mike, okay, I, I, okay, Mike, is that what you want to do? That's fine. Is that's what you this is that you'll get down, Mike? That's fine. Mike is not trying to ruffle nobody's feathers. 
nobody white. Let's be real. And we know, we've heard several stories about how Michael Jordan is when it comes to the black folks. You don't really like fucking with black folks like that. You do? Mike has helped in Chicago. Like what? Because somebody was arguing with me about what Michael Jordan has done for black folks particularly. They, they start talking about what Michael Jordan gave to the NAACP. Nigga, NAACP is a white funded organization and a white controlled organization. Then somebody said, well, Michael Jordan has the Jordan brand foundation and they give money to um, inner city kids. The Jordan brand, the foundation is owned by Nike. That's Nike doing promotions. The Jordan brand, that's why they call it the Jordan Brand Foundation. It's something that's controlled by Nike. That's Nike doing some promotion, basically. And Michael Jordan, he helped out with the police brutality stuff. Now, Michael Jordan, did he give money to Black Lives Matter, whoever that is? He also gave money to the police unions. So that X'd out whatever he did for Black Lives Matter, whoever that is. So y'all run that game on somebody who don't know. Run that game on somebody who doesn't know. We know the game. And let me say this. Let's stop that rumor about Michael Jordan investing in prisons. That's not true. That is not true. Michael J Jordan did not invest in prisons. There's another dude, a white guy named Michael Jordan. All right? That's the one that they're talking about. It's not the same Michael Jordan. Let's, let's clear that lie. Michael Jordan did not invest in prisons. He did. You did? So I, I want people to stop that rumor. I don't want us, I don't want us to mix up bullshit with, with truth and bullshit. <clears throat> yeah, Jordan gave money to Spike Lee for Malcolm X. Yeah, that was cool. That was cool. Yeah, Doris, I talked about that earlier, how they had those bait trucks up there in Chicago. Yeah, let, don't, don't do that prison rumors. Let's stop that. Let's kill that prison rumor bullshit. Let's, let's stop that. We don't need lies out here. We need truth to power. It's an old rumor and it's not true. We need truth to power. You dig? Yeah, those bait trucks in Chicago. And we, we've been telling you guys about how they put bait trucks and also police be putting trucks out there with merchandise. And it's been known for years that in, in L.A. too, these trucks and trains would show up with guns. We've been talking about that for years. In Chicago... And L.A., a truck or a train would mysteriously pull up, has a gang of guns in it, and all everybody's going after each other in these guns. And law enforcement, they know when these murders happen, they know where the guns came from. They, they, they know the tracings and everything, so they already know. They know the neighborhoods the guns were taken to. You dig? So they already know. They're dropping. I've heard in Chicago, cats have seen crates of guns in alleys. So now we, we've we've caught them red-handed setting up shit. The police out here leaving shit and then trying to dip. We, we've caught them red-handed doing it. So they're doing that with shoes, trying to get people hemmed up. You know they're doing it with guns. You know they're doing it with something else. And you know it's law enforcement putting it there. So any ills of black society, you know, they're always 100% behind it. I saw something. There was some city, some black area, where <clears throat> there's some kind of factory, and the factory is polluting all the black people there. Where is this? I, I forgot. It was. I mean, these stories be coming so fast. But it was some city 
you know, all the black people are getting sick. Where's that city? I, 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 I saw some of the story, but I didn't get a chance to get into all of it because I'm like, okay, here we go again. Somebody help me out with this story. Was it in Louisiana? Alabama? Where was it? It was in Louisiana. So it was, okay, everybody's saying Louisiana. Somebody throw a link up. If you can throw a link up to the story. Not, not Flint. We already know about Flint. What city in Louisiana was it? What city in Louisiana? Is it Union? Was somebody say Uniontown, Alabama? No, this is recently. This ain't back in... No, no, y'all talking about... No, no, no. This is recently. Somebody said it was in Louisiana. Okay, y'all name it every city. Reserve, Louisiana. Let me look that up real quick. Let me look it up real quick. Because people are giving a bunch of different names. And Hold on. Let me look it up. Let me bring truth to power. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Hold on. see. All right, let me see if I can find it real quick. Okay. Well, this is old. Okay, Louisiana Cancer Alley. Okay, okay, that's one place. There's another place. Okay, hold on. But this is recent. Reserve Louisiana, that's one place. Hold on. I forgot about this. I, I heard about this place, Cancer Alley. Okay, this is it right here. Okay. This is in, okay, St. John's at the Church. Okay, yeah, this was in Louisiana. Thank you. Okay, yeah, the um, Helm of the Battle, the Paris, the Louisiana, where is this? In St. John the Baptist Parish. Okay, this is, okay, same place, same place, Cancer Rally. Okay, yeah, this is a black area where they put all the black people, and so many black people are dying and getting sick, they call it Cancer Alley. That's it, okay. So, so many black people over in this area are getting sick and dying. They nicknamed the place Cancer Goddamn Alley. And shout out to Louisiana. We're just down there. We had a great time. I hope you guys saw the ISM uh, radio show we put up. And the Atlanta episode is going to be up um, hopefully tomorrow. Let me call my editor and see what's going on with it. Shout out from Chicago, man. I was talking about Chicago earlier. But yeah, Reserve Louisiana. What's up, um, Charm? They have been cancer alleys in Houston, Louisiana for over 20 years. Kennedy Neighborhood Lawsuit. Awesome. Oh, that's heavy. Sure. It's a town of black people. That's the shit. You got these black towns, but it's controlled by white people, white politicians, white police. See, this is the egg we got to crack. We got to learn how to control the politics and the police. Because there's a black town over there in Atlanta, right outside of the suburbs of Atlanta, and I asked the people there, because, you know, they, they, they're getting their economy and all that together. I'm like, okay, who's running the police force? And they were like, well, we still have to deal with Atlanta police there. we got to be able to control those police. That's the thing. You can build up a community, but if you cannot protect that community, we got a problem. we got to be able to protect that community militarily. You dig? And, you know, we're going to talk a lot about what we're eating and what not to eat. We're going to get real deep in that in the next Hidden Colors. We're going to touch on that heavy. Alabama drinking water linked to cancer. And again, it's no coincidence that all of these cities with poisoned water, all of these areas where people are getting cancer, 
that it, it it just happens to be black areas. That's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence that every time somebody's being poisoned, going back to the lead poisoning that would happen to black children in the 1950s and 60s, the, the white supremacists, if they put you somewhere, there's always a trick bag. When the white supremacists determine where you live, I'm telling you there's always a trick bag. This is why we got to go out of our way to control where we live. A black community is where you set up shop. When they put you somewhere, you are in imminent danger. When they put you somewhere, you are in imminent danger. They set it up so that the whammy bammy will come through maybe years later. Just like back in the day when they would put black folks in housing projects. They were like, hey, look, black folks, we got this urban renewal thing because we're, we don't want you guys to suffer with all these freeways we're building in your own neighborhoods that you control. When you controlled your own neighborhoods, y'all wouldn't have, y'all didn't get all that cancer bullshit. But we're going to put freeways in your neighborhoods now and we're going to put you into something called housing projects. And when they start putting black people in them housing projects, then they put lead paint on the walls. The lead paint killing people. Then they put the freeways around the housing projects. And then the lead from the cars will pop up and kill people. They always get you one way or another. You dig? We're going to put you in Flint. Now the water's messed up. Kennedy Heights lawsuit, Chevron in Houston. Okay. Yeah, they got asbestos in the pipes. You dig? So they always got a trick bag for you. This is why it's important for us to control everything. And also understand black people. Like Neely Fuller told us, the white supremacists, they're very good at playing both sides of the board. They will play both sides of the argument. And this is something that black people, we're going to have to stop falling for. Just because somebody in the dominant society appears to be supporting your movement, that doesn't mean that they don't support your opposition. I want black people to really understand this. And I noticed this with that Trayvon Martin documentary that came out. I saw a lot of people in the dominant society like, oh, wow, that's so horrible and sad. Oh, man, that Zimmerman is a monster. These people can go to hell. And I saw Geraldo. Geraldo, of all people, he, when that Trayvon Martin show was on, Geraldo was on there talking about, oh, Tr Trayvon Martin had a, a, a great life ahead of him. His life was cut short like so many black men. Fuck you, Geraldo. Fuck you, Geraldo. Geraldo of all people. Fuck you, Geraldo. Really, dude? Geraldo, him and all of the Fox News people were the main ones propping up Zimmerman. They were the main ones shitting on Trayvon Martin. Geraldo was, I was in Baltimore, Geraldo was up there in Baltimore when Freddie Gray got murdered. Geraldo was up there antagonizing black folks. Man, fuck a Geraldo. He was the main one up there at them riots and uprisings antagonizing people. Calling people thugs and all this old shit. The white supremacists are faker than a $3 bill, dude. Yeah, he blamed the hoodie. Yeah, he, you know, wearing, unfortunately, wearing a hoodie makes you look suspect. Fuck you, Geraldo. Geraldo's been on that bullshit. He used to go after Johnny Cochran heavy. Geraldo used to go after the lawyer Johnny Cochran real heavy. I remember Geraldo had a whole bunch of women on stage talking about Johnny Cochran abused them. And abuse means he... Walked by and bumped a woman's shoulder. He touched a woman's arm and that was abuse. He had a whole hour show with these trying to coerce these women to say they were abused by Johnny Cochran. 
Oh, yeah, Mark Cuban, all these people. Understand, all these people with the fake crocodile tears for Trayvon, when Zimmerman got off, they were celebrating. You better understand, I remember some of those people celebrating. Uh, Gloria Allred, Tammy Bruce from the um, National Women's Organization, they were celebrating when Zimmerman got off, talking about, well, that was a correct verdict. Don't let these people fool you coming around. Oh, that's so sad. Oh, black man got it so bad. Oh, they're the ones who orchestrated. Who was holding babies in Katrina? Who are Kara? Carol, who was holding babies, black babies in Katrina? Was it Geraldo? Well, was Geraldo down there, Katrina? Hold on, let me let me get something straight here. Because that's the thing. They think because they get to pick up a couple of babies and all that, that they are down. No. Geraldo and Shepard Smith was down in um, Katrina. I, I don't get, yeah, that whole going around there at the last minute. Said none discriminated. Said that no one discriminated black people. Okay, I don't know what you're saying, Mari. But, um, yeah, Geraldo going around, well, if, if he was, I didn't see him, but hugging babies doing Katrina, that don't mean shit. That don't mean nothing. Let's not get fooled by that. <clears throat> Let's not get fooled by that. Black people, you know, we, we start melting anytime white people show us any kind of affection. And they're good at running game. Geraldo... He tried to play that minority game a long time. I'm a minority too. I'm a I'm a Puerto Rican Jew. I'm I'm a I'm I'm a minority too, just like you. He, Geraldo is fake, fake, fake. Another deceptive, suspected white supremacist. Nothing more, nothing less. Yes, Geraldo's been wanting to get revenge for years on black society. Real talk, Mark Serious. Mars Serious. See, we got to understand just because these suspected white supremacists come around and pat a couple of babies on the head, that don't mean they're down. And understand, these people will play both sides of the argument. A white supremacist will be at a Black Lives Matter march right there with you. Black Lives Matter. They'll be out there with a sign screaming louder than you. They will be screaming louder than you. And they'll go into a courtroom on a jury and vote not guilty for a race soldier blowing your brains out. And then go right back to the march. Oh, man, this justice system. We're going to have to really protest this justice system. Maybe one day we'll get justice like Martin Luther King says. They'll be the main ones who voted not guilty. I wish black people get that concept. Black people, you go somewhere and you see all of these people in the dominant society and you think that they're down and, oh man, everything is hunky dory. We all in this room together. Everybody love each other. And those same people in the dominant white society, every one of them would get in the courtroom and vote not guilty. Notice none of these people that's at the marches, all these down white people y'all see, they're never in the courtroom when you knew you need them. They're never anywhere where you need them. They are never in the courtroom when you need them. You dig? When you need them to punish a race soldier, all of a sudden, they ain't nowhere to be found. No, if they're to be found, they're in that courtroom. And right after they get out that courtroom, they go put on a Bob Marley shirt or whatever and act like they're down. 
And they are the main ones maintaining systematic white supremacy. I wish black folks get that. When black people get that, you'll understand we have no friends. Then you'll start marching. That's why I don't advocate any marches because I noticed that. I would notice at these marches, there'd be a bunch of white people there. But I'm like, okay, where, where in the hell were they in the courtroom? And I'm thinking, they are in the courtroom. I mean, there's more white people out there marching than Negroes. I'm like, well, none of them in the courtroom? And then it dawned on me, I'm like, shit. Half that jury is probably out there marching right now. You dig? The jury's out there marching right along with you. We need justice, and they just acquitted somebody. They're real good at running game, undermining you, and then running game. They're very good at that. I don't care about the yo 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 your words to your mother of white people either. Black people got to get off that. There was a, a white boy out here in L.A., these brothers, these dumb niggas, and y'all should have known better, they're out here cripping, and they got this white boy cripping with them, and he's all down. You know, the, the white gangbanger is the most down one. He's the one uh, probably crip walking from dusk to dawn. This white boy was the getaway driver in the drive-by shooting these niggas did. Everybody went to jail but the white boy. The white boy got off. They didn't put him in jail. In L.A., they got all types of gang injunctions out here. Nigga, if you gave somebody gas money for a drive-by, you going to jail for life. They got every type of gang injunction in the world out here. This white boy was the getaway driver. And they put everybody in jail but him. You dig? You gonna learn. Y'all gonna learn. They stay on code. It had a black attorney who got him off. You know, let me tell you something. They could have got a, an avatar attorney. He would have got off. They didn't get him off because that black attorney, that black attorney did not work magic. It could have been Benjamin Crump. It could have been a, a, an attorney, a, an ostrich in a suit, and that boy would have got off. They were going to let him off anyway. Yeah, that's not serious, twamps. That's not serious. You don't take anything, Jesse. Jesse just said shit. Yeah, the drive-by was in his car. <laughs> they did a drive-by in his car. He drove to the drive-by. They did a drive-by in his car. Everybody went to jail except the driver. You did? And I tell black people all the time, the white cats, they're always down to be on that rah-rah shit because they ain't getting punished any one way or the other. So they talk y'all dumbasses into doing all the rah-rah shit. They ain't going to jail. And they, they miss me with that bullshit about him coming from a rich family. They ain't got shit to do with it. The richness was the whiteness. That's the richness. Because what they're trying to do, they're trying to make it seem like, well, it's not about race. It's about really class. Bullshit. This was 100% racial. Even if he was a broke white boy, he would not have gone to jail. It's that affluenza shit. Miss me with that whole, it's about, it's money keeps you out of jail. Bill Cosby is a damn billionaire. He's going to jail. Well, damn near a billionaire. Bill Cosby's going to jail. Miss me with that. Don't fall for that. Bill Cosby is mega rich, and they frame the hell out of him on false charges and a false conviction. The conviction is false, and they're trying to register him as a violent sex offender. You know why? And he's not violent. Who did he commit violence against? Y'all saw that thing with Bill Cosby? They're trying to say register him as a violent sex offender. So now when they do the sentencing, they're going to throw that violence on there so they can try to give him life. 
which 20 years is life for Bill Cosby. He's 80-something years old. You did? Thank you. Man, Freeway Rick gave me this shirt. Yeah, OJ was rich. Meek Mill was rich. They put him in jail. I don't give a fuck about a black person being rich. Yeah, miss me with that affluenza bullshit and money. Nigga, if Lil Romeo was driving Master P's car to a drive-by, Lil Romeo's ass be in jail. You dig? When does Freeway Rick's cable show? Well, well, there's a show called Snowfall that's based on him, but he don't get paid for it, though. They don't pay for it, though. Yeah, Romeo, how old is little Romeo now? Man, thank you very much, Chris. You like, how many of y'all got the mink slide out? Oh, this is the billboard. It's billboard magazine this week. Show y'all the date. Um, y'all need to have this as a collector's item. And August 4, 2018. On um, Billboard, the magazine gives the partial charts. On Billboard.biz, they have the complete charts. On the, um, They have us on the... We're in the Heat Seeking. This is Billboard. Where we at? Heat Seekers out. The hottest new groups right here. All right? This is the new Billboard. Let's get back and focus thing. Hold on. Hey, where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Mink Slide. Look at that. Number 19. Mink Slide, Egyptian Musk. Number 19 on the Heat Seekers album charts. All right. It's blurry, but shit. Can y'all see that? Let me get a little close. Why is this camera not focusing like it's supposed to? All right. So we're doing the thing in Billboard. It's official like a mug. The album, let me, it's a good, excellent album. I don't want to say good. It's an excellent album, man. We got on Billboard. We're an independent group on Billboard. We are an independent R&B group. That's one thing. Because being an independent rap group is one thing. But being an independent R&B group. Yes, 19 is a godly number. I know. You can't say it's photoshopped. I mean, shit, you can go buy the magazine your damn self and see it. That's why I show you. Get the magazine. Keep it as a collector. This is my first time being in Billboard magazine. On the charts. Being on the Billboard charts. You dig? That's what's up. Y'all need to start hitting y'all local radio stations up and getting them to play um, um, City Lights. Because we, we're on the charts and we ain't even on the radio yet. We're not even on the radio yet. If we get on the radio, it's really a wrap. We're on the, the Billboard charts and we don't even have any radio play. This is just word of mouth. Everybody's filling the album. We had to make the album extra, extra good in order for it to really compete. And hold on, let's look at, let me look at the, um, let me look at the um, Google Play charts. Because the Google Play charts is pretty accurate. Like the iTunes charts, it's cool, but, you know, the, the labels kind of control what's on there. They kind of do promotions and they'll put what the label says is hot. But Google Play is usually based on raw album sale numbers. All right? And on Google Play right now, this is, all right, you go to Google Play, popular R&B albums, that's her, the girl, her, I, lo I love her. And who is this? Queen Nija. Her again. Hers other album, and then us right there. So we're in the top five on the um, Google album charts too. 
And again, uh, we're going up against all these major, these are major label acts. These are people on Columbia, Sony. We've been on the charts like this, on the top of the charts for a couple of weeks already. The album was released on the 20th. So we're still on the top of the charts. So it ain't no fluke. You understand? Nadja, yeah, Nadja gets a lot of airplay. And she's good. She gets a lot of radio play. We're going up against these people, and we have not got any radio play. So just imagine if we get radio play. Everybody, my LA people, call up the KJLH tomorrow and get them to play City Lights. Wish for love. A lot of folks want that to be the next single. But family, call up your radio stations and tell them to play Mink Slide, City Lights. Call up your radio stations and say, Play City Lights by Mink Slide. You dig? Shout out to Long Island. <clears throat> yeah, a lot of the radio stations are syndicated program. Yeah. I'm not taking calls right now. Yeah, Queen Niger, she got a lot of promotions. You did? Yeah, we know. We, we talked about Chicago. We talked about the people getting shot. And again, we I suspect that it's some white supremacists that got something to do with it. I'm definitely going to develop offshoot groups. I am. I'm definitely going to develop offshoot groups. That's why... I, we're, we're, we're setting the groundwork right now with Mink Slide. Right now, we got the streets popping with it. I want to get the um, the radio popping. I really want to get in with them and really take it to another level. And then we want to get the touring and all that popping. Yeah, we're going to, I think what we're going to do we're going to put together our own tour because, you know, my company, King Flex Entertainment, we, we put together events anyway, and we already got connections with venues. So what I'm thinking we're going to do, we're going to go on a quick tour, hit up a few cities, take the APX out with me, and just really rock this shit. Shout out to Hampton, Virginia. Shout out to Kiki. From Hampton, Virginia, the Maybach. What does Kiki look like? Most girls named Kiki are kind of cute. William, I grooves in the video. I get it in in my video, William. So you stop hating. I be getting it in in my videos. I'm not out there twerking. I do it like old school players supposed to. You work them fucking shoulders. And that's it. You work your shoulders, work your arms. I'm not trying to thrust my balls and nuts. My nigga. I'm not hungry. What you get? No, no, no. I'm just too, I'm not hungry. What the hell you got on, nigga? Come here. What you got on? Come here. Step on the road. Okay. Yeah. Fucking with them drawers. What? It's the, it's the one with the African dude? No, I the... The African. Come say hi to everybody. Will. I gotta go on. The African, the woman who's gonna see him, yeah. she's like a Trump supporter and she makes him put an America girl in and charge her and take pictures. Oh, God. And he's there in Nigeria? Yes, she goes to Nigeria. Nigga. <laughs> Peanut said on 90 Day Fiance, they got this um, this white lady that went to Nigeria with, to get this brother. <laughs> and this she's a Trump supporter. So she went out there and got this nigga to put on like a Trump shirt and a Trump hat and take pictures. Didn't I say they know how to make motherfuckers into coons? You the Ayla, I mean the guy. <laughs> this is how they make coons. I'm telling you, they know the white supremacists know how to go find a coon and make a good coon. He's gonna I hope he finesse the fuck out of her ass. Well, I didn't see the part yet. I, I hope the I hope the 90 day finesse. I hope he finesse her ass for every dime she has. Because 
Some of them Nigerian dudes. All of them ain't coons. So I'll give them that. Sometimes they, they see a good mark and they know how to finesse them. And she's a beast. Like, like and she looks at her teeth. Oh, so God. Wrinkly. And his friend was telling him, she's a grandma. He goes, no, she is not that way. He's just messing. Lord, Lord, Lord. Man. I hope he finesse her ass so heavy. I hope he get that green card. But shit. They're going to make that nigga work for that green card. And we'll have another Coleon Noir. What about black with black pride? Yeah. Just learn how to finesse and make the best out of the finesse. Damn. Need to come back. I'm here. I never left. Shout out to Colin Kaepernick. Did y'all see what happened with Colin Kaepernick? Um, EA Sports, you know, they have music and stuff playing, or, or rappers and, and rap songs playing during the, the, the sport game, the video games. And what they would do, a couple of rap songs, they bleeped out the name and censored the name Colin Kaepernick. They censored Big Sean and uh, YG rapping about Colin Kaepernick. They, they bleeped his name, cut his name out. You dig? And then acted like, oh, that was some kind of glitch. That's bullshit because they did it before. That wasn't a glitch. They they, they blurred out his name on a song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they apologizing and acting like it's a glitch. And it's just them running white supremacist games. I asked Colin. I, I, I asked Colin to be on it. I've asked Colin. I did ask Colin to be on Hidden Colors 5. I did ask him. Because I said, you know, we wanted to talk about, you know, the, um, you know, everything that's going on, and he said, um, you know, they're still going through litigation. I don't know. I don't think Colin wants to rock the boat. I don't know. That might be a little bit too heavy. I, I wish he would do it, Colin. I wish he would do it for the people, because the people would like that. And the Hidden Colors 5 is a, it's a real big thing. And the people will really enjoy it. And it would be very good for people worldwide to see it. To see him speak to the people. Directly to the people. You dig? Thomas Sankara. Yeah, who is that? That name. Damn, that name. I just heard that name too. Who is Thomas Sankara? That name sounds very familiar. And Nipsey, Nipsey got to call me back. Nipsey was supposed to be in and I was supposed to film Nipsey. Nipsey never hit me back. So y'all holler at Nipsey and tell him we still want to have him in it. Y'all holler at Nipsey. Yeah, that's my, I'm thinking, I don't know, this college, his agent might be like, ah, uh, I don't know. I don't know, but this, holler at Colin. No, Joy DeGruy is not going to be in Hidden Colors 5. No, she's not. Yeah, and I know he has a lawsuit against the NFL, so I get that. Oh, how tall is RZA? RZA is um, like 6'7". He's taller than me. I'm like 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, so you saw me standing next to RZA. He's like taller than me. So RZA is a tall dude. RZA is spitting some hot fire too, man. In Hidden Colors 5, my man Rizzo is spitting hot fire. Who is this texting me? Who is this? Oh, no. He does ordering something and our Postmates is hitting me up. Hold on. Hold on. Wait one second. King Crab. Okay, let me see. King Crab. Hold on, let me tell her. They said the king crab isn't available. Oh. Postmates just hit me up saying you gotta change the order. But um like I said, understand just because people in the dominant society are around you 
that doesn't mean that they do not support your opposition. Like last night, we were at the um, the OJ's concert with Charlie Wilson, the headliner, and I was videoing, I was live streaming all last night, and as you saw, people who saw us, that concert was full of white people. And a lot of white people were like, well, damn, why so many white people at the OJ's Charlie Wilson concert? I'm like, well, they want to hear some real R&B. They like real R&B. It was packed with white people out there. But understand this. Just because these white people out there do, to see Charlie Wilson and listen to the Gap Man music and all that, these same people that get up there and vote for Trump. You dig? These same people will be at the damn alt-right rally. As a matter of fact, there were some people outing some of the people at the alt-right rally. Here. Come here, come here. Come here. Come here. But um, yeah, 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 like I said, it doesn't matter. They'll go to the alt-right meeting and be right there listening to Charlie Wilson in their headphones. As a matter of fact, in Portland, some of those alt-right dudes were literally doing the cha-cha. They were out there dancing and shit because the police were protecting them. They were doing the cha-cha slide and all this old dumb shit. Yeah, they were out there dancing. Don't be fooled by that. You better understand the game. They love black entertainers, yeah. What place you getting that from? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, shit, white supremacists, they love Kanye, shit. Yes, y'all hit these radio stations up and get them to play Mink Slide City Lights. They see this shit on the charts. They know what it is. Hit your stations up and tell them to bump that City Lights. Have them bump that City Lights. All my program directors who's listening, bump that City Lights. Yes, I do want to get, I want to get Godfrey, I want to get D.L. Hughley. I want, I want to hit them up. I'm going to hit them up tonight and see what their availability is. So we'll probably have to go out to New York. And I'm, I don't know what peanuts, I'm not eating the food peanuts again. Yeah, I ain't about to, uh, if I mess with crab, I can't eat crab, man. My gal would be so fucked up. So yeah, send me the name of some of these DJ pools too. Send me some of the top ranking DJ pools. Yeah, that's something that I got to do. I got to start sending it to some of these DJ pools. You dig? What's up, Joe Khan? You said escape the Democratic Party plantation and replace it with the Republican plantation? So what's different from that? Um, what's the difference between the Republican plantation and the Democrat plantation? Have I heard Kaepernick is sponsored by the Boule? That's bullshit. Who told you that, Flossin Daly? That's a crock of bullshit. That's bullshit. Who told you that? Yeah. That's what's up, DJ Scrap. Prince Ice Big, 101 FM, Columbia, South Carolina. Okay. What's up, James Earl?
But um, we got some good people that's already in the HC5. There's, um, there's a couple of people down in Atlanta. I'm going to be down there. I'm going to hit them up. So we, we're going to have a, real, a very good cast of people in this one. Yeah, that, that shit. Kaepernick ain't no boule. Niggas just be saying anything. He's just saying anything. And Boulay don't really sponsor anybody. They're sponsored by somebody. They don't sponsor nobody. That's why I know it's bullshit. They don't sponsor any people. Prince Ice. Shout out to Prince Ice. Where's Prince Ice is on what station? Where are my Detroit radio people? Shout out to my Detroit radio folks. Where is the electrifying mojo? I remember him when I was a kid back in the day. Where is mojo? Is he still on the air somewhere? Man, but it also, you guys, again, if you guys have not gotten your uh, Mink Slide album, you guys go to iTunes, get it off iTunes if you have an iPhone. If you have an Android, get to um, Google Play, get your copy of the Mink Slide Egyptian Musk album, which I think this album should be nominated for a Grammy. I think this album, and many other people think so too, this is the best R&B album that's out right now. Hands down. No other R&B album is doing what Mink Sly Egyptian Musk is doing. And I say that very humbly. Every song on that album is banging. This ain't like a, a, a hot single and a bunch of fillers. Every song can be a single. It's a banging album. You dig? RC85, I need, yeah, I do need artists drawing. You can draw for AC5. Yes, Miss Miss Right Stuff, hit them up. That's what we need the family to do. We need the Melanoy 300 family to probably get stuff done. Let's hit up all your local radio stations and have them play it. You dig? That's how we get stuff done. Yeah, real talk, Michael, Michael Gardner. What's up, William? You said the album has grown up for you. Now, William, how old are you? How old are you, William? What I mean by Monique? I talked about Monique on my last show, so. Joe Jackson, what's your show? What show do you have, Joe? William, you 25? Nigga, you old enough. You, you ain't no spring chicken, nigga. You 25 years old. You know how to do the electric slide, nigga. This nigga acting like he a teenager. I don't, I don't know about that old school R&B. Nigga, you were born in 93. What? what, uh, what uh, 96? When were you born, nigga? You ain't that young, nigga. You born right around when Tupac got shot. Oh, nigga, you old enough to know funk when you hear it. Nigga trying to act extra young like he don't know nothing. No, nigga, I'm, I'm, yeah, that might be a little out of my age range. Nigga, you were born when Montel Jordan album was out, nigga. Stop it. <laughs> you ain't that young, motherfucker. Like you still in high school. Man. Much love. What's up, China White? How are you out there in Atlanta? But like I was saying earlier, man, um, you know, these white supremacists, they're, they're trying to target certain people. Like I said, they, they targeted Sean King. They, um, called child services and said that the, his children were using drugs and they were 
They just made up a bunch of shit. They, again, they did the same thing with me. The white supremacists tried to, but I kind of hit them off before they did. We let law enforcement know what was up, and we kind of let the authorities know that these white supremacists were going to try to make false claims to child services. And these white supremacists, not only were they threatening me, they were threatening to kidnap my daughter. They were doing all types of shit. But the thing is, they said, um, they were like, look, they were calling me, making these threats about kidnapping my daughter. And they were like, look, we know your daughter goes to Inglewood High School and we're going to kidnap her. I said, good luck, motherfucker. <laughs> good luck going to Inglewood. <laughs> Talking about kidnapping a black person. Good luck. You motherfuckers going to need some ransom money your damn self. I laughed at that. Now that was funny. You go up to Inglewood High School, a white supremacist go up to Inglewood High School, come on, they about to kidnap somebody, them freshmen beat your ass. But I want to see that. So that, I wasn't worried about that. You dig? Y'all saw what happened when the white supremacists tried to go down to Maxine Waters' office, so I, was, I wasn't tripping on that. You dig? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't tripping on that at all. You dig? You say, why do older blacks keep saying, I hate to sound like I'm old and all? Because, you know, when, when we're young, you know, you 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 don't want to sound like your parents used to sound. Y'all need y'all cut that damn music down. You you don't want to sound like that, but damn, you like when you get older, you're like, shit, turn that motherfucking bullshit down. I'm not trying to hear these mumbling niggas. Then he, then you start sounding old, you know. You do sound you you sound old sometimes. So he, he's 25, listening to Lil Tay. I know. Hell yeah. Y'all yeah, knew some white supremacists were not about to go down to no damn Inglewood to do shit. So that way I wasn't tripping on that. So I, you sounding and looking old with the back scratcher. Well, nigga, I got this from your mom. This is really, it's not a back scratcher. I use this on your mom as a titty tickler. I just kind of give it a little one of these and I get her in the mood. Nigga. I'm just using it as a max scratcher. But it's a titty tickler for your mom. Nigga. Well, I rub this on her titty and then pour her a nice glass of cold duck and it's on and popping. Ah. <laughs> man, man, man. Is Inglewood. No, Inglewood is not a bad area, but that's not the area you're going to go talking about. You're going to run up on somebody black with some bullshit. That's what I'm saying. No, it's not a bad area. No, 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 it's not a bad area. Like L.A., even South Central L.A. ain't a bad area, but if you run down there with the bullshit, it will get bad. That's the thing. That's, that's the thing about L.A., Cause you go into a neighborhood and it's like trees and the houses look nice and you're like, oh shit, cool. And then all of a sudden, you're like, oh, let me take some pictures of the trees. And then 30 niggas pull up in cars on your ass like, hey, what you doing with that camera, blood? It's like that. Shit just pops off at the drop of a hat out here in L.A. You dig? So certain shit you do and, and you ain't supposed to be doing it. Things will go left for you. Cold duck, that's that old school drink. That's that old um, um, liquor from from Andre. That's uh, one of them old school liquors. Yeah, same in Detroit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you walk off in the wrong neighborhood. 
you know, cats might kind of question you. Yeah, Inglewood got the Inglewood family bloods out there too. Yeah, they got a big blood gang out there. The Inglewood family is that's and they big out there. But cool, cool dudes. Real cool dudes. I used to fuck with some Inglewood bloods. Heavy, real good dudes. Real good friends of mine. Yeah, you get caught up real quick. Man. Yeah, yeah, they are in they're gentrifying Inglewood because they're building that stadium. They're building that uh, football stadium out there. So, you know, it's getting real gentrified. Hold on to what you have. That's why we should invest and you know, hold on to what we have. One of my favorite Jamaican spots, Coley's, used to be out there. And it's not there no more. I used to love Coley's. I've been on here for a long time talking about y'all ass. No, Watts is definitely not the same as Inglewood. No, 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 no. Not at all. Watts, that's the east side. We call it the, let me explain. Whenever you hear somebody in L.A. say something about the west side and the east side, they're talking about the, the 110 freeway. The 110 freeway kind of divides a lot of sets up. So east of the freeway, you got Watts, um, Compton, Linwood, and all that stuff. That's the east side. West side, you know, you got South Central, Inglewood. You know, you got Washington High School, all that stuff on the west side. Jason Kessler said his rally is going to be unarmed. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. Y'all better be on the lookout. Y'all better be on the alert when the white supremacists come out. Stanley, I don't know, brother. I don't know, Stanley. Yeah, Hawthorne actually used to be a sundown town. At one point in Hawthorne, California, black people couldn't live in Hawthorne at all. Black people could not live in Hawthorne. Um, for a long time, black people couldn't be in Glendale. Um, Glendale was a sundown town. You couldn't be in Glendale at night. And truth be told, if you still drive around Glendale and shit like that at night, you know, the police is still funny style if you black. That's why I don't like fucking around in Glendale late at night and my editor lives out there and you know when i go back and forth to his spot usually it's in the daytime i do not like fucking around in glendale at night yes that's that mink slide called real 92.3 studio line 866-246-8923 any more content advice for fat women. The last video you posted talking about a fat girl with her boyfriend helped me lose. And her boyfriend helped you lose 100, helped you lose 10 pounds. Well, what did I say? I forgot what I said. What did I say? Yeah, Compton was all white for a long time. Yeah, Compton was all white for a long time. There's a brother named Dootsie Williams, um, black man. He um he bought a lot of property out there in Compton in the '60s. Then let's talk about the history of LA for a minute. Some of the stuff out here. A, Compton was all white. I think George Bush's family used to live in Compton for a quick minute. That's how white it was. The Bush family uh, in the 1960s. A brother named Dootsie Williams. Um, he got a bowling alley out there in Compton, and it was like a nightclub, and he had a record label. He was the one who actually, I think he discovered Dolomite, the comedian Dolomite. And this guy would put out records by Red Fox. So he established, you know, um, a little hub in Compton, which helped black folks come in. 
you dig? You know, when when one or two black folks come in, then all the white people get the hell on up out of there. But it was a brother named Dootsie Williams. This brother had a lot of, this was a real papered up brother. And um, he had a club called Dudos in Compton. And Dudos was, I think it was connected to the bowling alley or something like that. And then it eventually, some parts of that area became Skateland and all that. But Dudos, if you look at the movie Straight Outta Compton, when Lonzo was running the club and Dre was DJing at the club and Ice Cube came in and was rapping, you saw it was Club Dudos. That's the same club in Compton. It's a long history of that stuff. So you know what's missing in black music? Black music, real shit. Yeah, Eddie Murphy's doing a, a reboot of Dolomite. If um, um, I know Wesley Snipes is in that, Mike Epps is in it. Yeah, Carson, California has strong black has a strong black middle class. Yeah, um, you know Carson is. You got a lot of Samoans out there, too. Carson is damn near all bloods in Carson, by the way. I'm going to let me, my out-of-towners keep them abreast of what's happening. Carson is damn near all bloods in Carson. Carson is damn near 100% blood city. And Long Beach is 100% crip city. Carson, Long Beach ain't too, too far from Carson. So you got Long Beach, all crips, Carson, all bloods. Compton is a mix. Brother, I done talked about Monique before. Stop asking that. L and B, don't ask that again. I talked about Monique the other day. Here's Barson. Uh, what's up, BC? Oh, yes, my man gave up the number for Power 106 request line. Nothing happened with Monique. The dude, I, nothing. Damn. I, I don't want to talk about old shit that I talked about days ago. I talked about that already. Nothing. Nothing. But, um, what's up, Heyru Jones? Shout out to Heyru. Where are the Crips in Carson? Because from what I see, what I know about Carson, it's all blood. But where are there Crips in Carson? What set, what Crips set is in Carson? In Carson 190, okay. ECC in Carson 190. They must be a small clique. How they operate in Carson with all them damn bloods? What's up, EB Associates? Tariq, it's me. Well, who are you, EB? All right. This nigga hopped in the room talking about Tariq, it's me. Who the fuck is it's me? East Coast 190 cars. Oh, okay. Oh, the, okay. Delamo. The, okay, okay, okay. I forgot about that. Okay. I straight forgot about the Delamo area. That is Carson. Okay. Okay, I forgot that area. That is Carson. Okay, okay, okay. I forgot about the Delamo area. I straight, I don't know why, why the fuck did I forget about that area? Okay. I'm thinking over there like by Carson High and all that, all that area over there by the fruit. I forgot, I forgot about the Delamo area over there. What type of strip club would play City Lights? Shit, any of them.
Um, I spoke about LeBron James School very briefly. You got family members from Pueblo Bishops. Hold on, EB. What? Ban this nigga. Hold on, I'm banning myself. This nigga's being moist. Hold on. Why this a bitch? Hold on. Am I blocking this nigga from the right account? Hold on, I'm blocking you from another account. Hold on. Can y'all block this EB nigga? EB and Associates. He just saying my name over and over and shit. I heard about the Asian salon. We talked about that earlier. They still got the Barbie Coast over there in Gardena. Yeah, block that EB dude. There you go. Just block his ass. Don't, don't just delete his message. Block his ass so he can't come back. That nigga energy is real moist. Love after lock. I haven't seen that. A Mormon black girl who was with a L.A. gangster trying to learn about his set. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah, gang violence in L.A. is down. It's not like it used to be. It's not like it used to be, yeah. Why are almost all voodoo books written by... Yeah, that is, yeah, a lot of them are. A lot of them are. Because they study our stuff. He said, why are most voodoo books written by white authors? And that's because they study our history and culture more than we do. See, the thing is, they tell us to be scared of it. They tell us to be afraid of voodoo. They tell us to be fearful. And they be sucking, soaking all of that game up. Okay, LMB, you go, please block him. LMB, this dude keeps asking about Monique, block him. I'm going to block him. Somebody block this LMB dude. All right. And we're going to trim the fat around here a little bit. All right. Boom. All right, got him on the body here real quick. When does um when does the new NFL season start, by the way? Yeah, a lot of gang members are in prison out here. When do football season start? Because I want to see what Dallas is going to do. Oh, yeah, you guys, um, we're still sending out those Mackish packages. Shout out to everybody who got the Mackish packages. Shout out to everybody who got the Mackish package. You guys are really, really, really going to enjoy it. We got a lot of orders. So we're going to be sending all of those out all this week. A lot of good stuff. Well, the sale was heavy. We, I, we've been busy all week, and I had to go to the office today and get some of the orders ready for Fatima and other workers. So we had to get all that ready. Because there's so many orders that's going, that came in. But you're going to enjoy it. And you guys are going to enjoy the lookbook and everything. We're going to have a lookbook. We're going to sell that individually um, starting this week. But people who got the Mackis package, you got it included in the package. So they get first dibs at it. All right, but anyway, let me go ahead and watch 90 Day Fiance. But anyway, family, remember, go get the Mink Slide album. We're on Billboard. And you can go get Billboard. Get this as a collector's item. This is the August... 4th, 2008 edition of Billboard. Get it, keep it as a collector's edition. This is the first time me and my group got on the Billboard charts. I'm very humbled by that, very excited about that. That was one goal. We've been on several other best-selling charts. Our first time being on the best-selling Billboard chart. 
everybody get the album, the best R&B album out right now. Big Slide, Egyptian Musk. There's a reason why it's on top of all of these charts. It's on top of the iTunes charts, on top of the Amazon charts, on top of the Google charts. There's a reason why it's a damn good album. That simple. We just made a damn good album. No cornball gimmicks. A damn good album. We are def Oh, yeah. Give us some venues that we could possibly play if we go on tour. Because I do want to put that together. I was thinking about that earlier. What? Because, you know, when we go on tour, usually I use lecture venues, but we need some something with the acoustics, the sound popping. You dig? So we're going to start putting that together pretty soon. But the best album out right now is Egyptian Must by Mink Slide. Yeah, I love the Chitlin Circuit. I work the Chitlin Circuit. See, black people, we got this thing that the Chitlin Circuit is bad, nigga. The Chitlin Circuit, that's just us. We, we put the negative connotation on our own money. Our money spends just like everybody else's money. We got to get off that thing. But we're going to look at our money bad. No. We got to get off that chitlin circuit thing. Just like with those Tyler Perry plays, they're like, those are chitlin circuit plays. But those plays make money. Those plays make money. You understand? Play at the, play at the White House hilarious. <laughs> so we're going to do a, a coon show. The Howard Theater charges a lot of money to rent that out. If we're going to do a lecture there. The Howard Theater costs like ten grand to rent out. I'm like, God damn, I ain't Frankie fucking Beverly. The Howard Theater is a lot of money to rent out, man. Get in? Damn. The complex in Oakland. Bit of Juneteenth Festival in Wharton, Tennessee. Man. Anyway, y'all, let me get out of here, man. Much respect. Thank y'all for tuning in. Um, shout out to everybody who got the Mac. It's package. You dig? Um, everybody, again, go get the Mink Slide Egyptian Musk album right now. Enjoy it. Share it. Call your radio stations tomorrow and tell them to play City Lights by Mink Slide. Y'all be good.